peace, peace, peace. I'm Chocolate Lemon Rock. This is the third part of class. At the ending of class two, I started Ashwa Quasar, master teacher. The lecture of African spirituality. The reason why we get into it now is because I don't want you to get misled just because I gave you two classes on Pastor Jenkins and how Pastor Jenkins broke down that the white Jesus is a lie, the false doctrine, false images. But I didn't agree with everything with Pastor Jenkins was stating. But I understood his methods and the words what he used to bring a, a point to what he was talking about. But now let's go use the African spiritual system and figure out the Bible, its history, where it came from. So we can all twine together and have a better concept and understand. Let's get into it. But before we do, Let's pay all the respects. The sun rises. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Amu. This book right here. The Chronicles of the Bible. By Yosef bin Jodahar. Which we know him as Dr. Ben. I don't know how many of you got this book. But. Get it. Very informing. But let's get into it. Brother Ashton Quasha. Oh it's going to be broken down. There's been so many different translated versions of the Bible. So when somebody comes to you and say the Bible, where do we start? The earliest recorded sacred writings. When one comes to a riverbank, you don't look at the riverbank from starting at that point. We want to find out where is the origin of this river. And only then can you understand the flow of the river. We have to go back to where are the first holy works written at? Where did the world get these concepts from? Let's go back to what is known as Per M. Haru. Per M. Haru means coming forth by day and by night. This goes back over 10,000 years ago. Coming down through the dynastic period known as the Pyramid Text, the Coffin Text, right there in the land of Kemet, right there in the northeastern corner of Africa, there you can see, carved in the fifth dynastic period, during this time, our ancestors carved in the Midunet, carved in stone their spiritual ascension of a holy rite. Later on, you have the Pentateuch. That is known as the first five books of Moses, written around 700 years B.C. That was copied from the early Africans' writings of coming forth by day by night or per and haru. Then you come down to the Septuagint version of the Bible written around 250 B.C. That's the Greek version of the Bible. This is Europe's first Bible. Where was it written at? Europe's first Bible was written right in Africa, right in the land of Kemet called Egypt today. The Ptolemies. The Ptolemies are a group of, of soldiers of Alexander the Barbarian, not the Great, the Barbarian. After his death, the Ptolemies took over at this time. And the Ptolemies commissioned the African Hebrews at that time in Kemet, to write for them their Bible, known as the Greek version of the Bible, known as the Septuagint version of the Bible. Where did they get their writings from? They copied from the early pyramid text that I talked about earlier. This is how they got their reference to the Bible. Then you have other various Bibles, like the Babylonian Tolman, one of the most racist versions of the Bible. The Babylonian Atonement Bible was derived, some of its writings was derived from the conference of Jammy in 90 AD, where they literally made up the ham story. This is allegorical mythology written by white racist theologians 
And we believe this to be an actual story. This is an allegorical racist myth of the whole Noah story and the Kurt story for the taking of the African Canaanites land. But you come all the way down to the John Wycliffe version of the Bible, the Latin Vulgate version of the Bible, that was Rome's version of the Bible. Then you come down into what is known as the King James version of the Bible, written in 1611 AD. The King James who rebelled against the Pope of Rome, and King James said, We're the, I'm the king of this day, we'll write our own Bible. And the Pope was against James because of his own promiscuous behavior. He also suffered from vagotitis, it's a very serious disease, it's still going on today. And, and then he decided to get Sir Francis Bacon, Henry Seville, to write the Bibles for them. Now, it says on the first page of the King James Version of the Bible that the book was diligently compared and revised. Diligently compared to what? To what I have just given you, the chronology going all the way back to African people who wrote Per and Haru. That's why I said somebody knows something about us that they don't want us to know about ourselves. Even if we come down to the New American version of the Bible. In fact, England and America almost went to war because America wrote its version of the Bible. And, and England wanted their Bible to be the last a Bible to be written. But again, America acting on the same basis that England had gone, said, we're the king of this day. We'll write our own Bible. So in the early 1900s, around 1901, this is when we get the new American version of the Bible. Now, although you still have the King James version of the Bible still around, but in another uh, hundred years from now, maybe even less than that, that book will slowly go out of circulation. Our great-grandmothers had the Greek version of the Bible, and it slowly went out of circulation. Now, the new American Bible will come into circulation. That's why I say the older the books, the more truth you have in it. That means the King James Bible will have more truth in it than the New American Bible. What's the difference in this truth? In the King James Version of the Bible, it speaks of in Revelation, speaking of Yeshua called Jesus today, that my hair is like lamb's wool and feet like brass as it put in an oven. Is that right? Clearly giving an identification that he is a black man. But when it gets down to the New American Version of the Bible, that identification clearly shows that he's a black man, but through white supremacy and the racism in America and the white cemetery schools or seminary schools, now we see that he has now become a great light. They have removed that. That has removed. He's a great light now. No longer does he come in with hair like lamb's wool and feet like brass is put in the oven. He is now a great light. so many different translated versions of the Bible. So when somebody comes to you and say the Bible, where do we start? The earliest recorded sacred writings. When one comes to a riverbank, you don't look at the riverbank from starting at that point. We want to find out where is the origin of this river. And only then can you understand. Listening, I hope that you had your pencils and paper. And the reason why I went to this the video is so we could break down the facts, the lies, more than the lies and anything else. These books here, I possess these books. I possess these books. Now, some of you brothers saying, yeah, right. But the type of brother I am, I'll show you. I'll be right back. All right, class, I'm back. These books I possess, I stated this, right? So what I wanted to show you is that I do have these books. The African origin of civilization, the myth, and reality. Huh? Right? The stolen legacy, the Egyptian origin of the Western philosophy. Huh? 
the destruction of the black civilization. Hmm? So, I brought some of my books out, and the reason why I did that is that I wanted to show you that class is not about some gibberish and me just speaking of um, whatever I want from my opinion. It's based on the facts that I possess. This was facts to show you here in this video that I had these books. So I know what's going on. But I also want to continue on with Asher Quasar. Please pay attention. Understand. The Bible has been written many different times. Dates and people has been described. You need to rewind so you can do your research. the flow of the river. We have to go back to where are the first holy works written at? Where did the world get these concepts from? Let's go back to what is known as Per M Haru. Per M Haru means coming forth by day and by night. This goes back over 10,000 years ago. Coming down through the dynastic period known as the pyramid text, the coffin text, Right there in the land of Kemet, right there in the northeastern corner of Africa, there you can see, carved in the fifth dynastic period, during this time, our ancestors carved in the Medunet, carved in stone, their spiritual ascension of the holy writings. Later on, you have the Pentateuch, that is known as the first five books of Moses, written around 700 years B.C., that was copied from the early Africans' writings of coming forth by day by night or Per and Haru. Then you come down to the Septuagint version of the Bible, written around 250 BC. That's the Greek version of the Bible. This is Europe's first Bible. Where was it written at? Europe's first Bible was written right in Africa, right in the land of Kemet called Egypt today. The Ptolemies. The Ptolemies are a group of, of soldiers of Alexander the Barbarian, not the Great, the Barbarian. After his death, the Ptolemies took over at this time. And the Ptolemies commissioned the African Hebrews at that time in Kemet to write for them their Bible, known as the Greek version of the Bible, known as the Septuagint version of the Bible. Where did they get their writings from? They copied from the early pyramid text that I talked about earlier. This is how they got their reference to the Bible. Then you have other various Bibles, like the Babylonian Atonement, one of the most racist versions of the Bible. The Babylonian Atonement Bible was derived, some of its writings was derived from the Conference of Jamie in 90 AD, where they literally made up the Ham story. This is allegorical mythology written by white racist theologians, and we believe this to be an actual story. This is an allegorical racist myth of the whole Noah story and the curse story for the taking of the African Canaanites land. But you come all the way down to the John Wycliffe version of the Bible, the Latin Vulgate version of the Bible, that was Rome's version of the Bible. Then you come down into what is known as the King James version of the Bible, written in 1611 AD. The King James who rebelled against the Pope of Rome, and King James said, We're the, I'm the king of this day, we'll write our own Bible. And the Pope was against James because of his own promiscuous behavior. He also suffered from vagotitis, it's a very serious disease, it's still going on today. And Now we're going to move on to another clip of Asha Kwesi. The drought took place and he and Kanun said you have not given recognition to your homeland, the south, upper Egypt. And then we see Kanun let the floodwaters open up. This is where we get the story. This information is not given to no one here but you. Because you've got a whole different reason for being back here. And that is to tell the truth. We want the truth and nothing but the truth. That's what we want here. You see? It's a new day. Something is opening up here. It's a spiritual consciousness. So you were looking at 
the Nuon, where the Noah's Ark came from. The Nuon. That's the origin. Now they got it encased in this casing here. That boat was a spiritual symbolic boat to symbolically to Okay, brothers and sisters, gods and goddesses, this is your Noah's Ark boat. Look at it. This is what religion people do not teach you. No synagogue, no Catholic, no Christians. <laughs> so, they don't teach you this. This is where they got the story from. The story of Noah's Ark in this Bible is not the same as this. This is the African story. Here, in this book, the King James, the New World's Translation, and all the other Bibles, over the centuries, copyright off of this original. And this is what we have to be careful at. This is how religion has play games with our people. And in fact, they play games with everyone. This is when it, it becomes everyone. But we mainly talk about the melanated race of the darker race. The brown, the darker brown, the blue blacks, the light skin. It's not being a bigot. Our origin was taken away. And you got to be careful how you put this out in this format because people are too institutionalized. They don't want to accept it. If anybody has any of the relatives that is indigenous people, which we call Indians, if you could somehow find the history 500 years, 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years, South and North America, if people was here 2,000 years ago, they would tell you they never heard such things. Huh? Why in Africa the flood is not mentioned the way is mentioned here in the Bible. I'm not saying the flood never happened, but the story the way the flood is here is totally different. You need to do your research. You do your research. And let me tell you, they are at the actual place in Africa, in Kemetic. They're in Yakol Egypt. They're there. They can see the actual boat. So who's telling a lie? And the best way to do it is call them up and do the pilgrimage. It's going to change your life. It's the best way to do it. Christians, I gave you Brother Jenkins. I gave you our Brother Jenkins broke it down that the white Jesus is a lie. I didn't agree with them with the black Jesus. I'll be honest with you. Because this, I understand why he said if you use the black Jesus that would be wrong because there's nowhere in the Bible where it's telling you a black Jesus, the Messiah. But why would it be in two different scriptures of the description of this man? Once again, according to the story, what you believe, what your mother, your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, if they were only taught this virgin of Christianity and no one spoke about this virgin, if we talk about three or four different generations constantly talking about this, and the true origin 
was hidden. This knowledge was not told. So, your family became institutionalized, but in many different ways. You go back 200 years, they took on the Christianity concept, indulged into it, simple fact, it was a strategy to survive. Let's don't fool ourselves. Let's get back into it. Ask your question. Khufu back to the celestial now. What was the purpose of the celestial now? The celestial now symbolically took him back to his spiritual father and first father that was Asar. So here you see the inundation of the now connected with the Milky Way. This was called the Nuonk. The flooding of the now was called the Nuonk. And that was the purpose of Khufu's boat was symbolically and spiritually was to take him back to his spiritual father. And that was during the inundation. So when the Nuonk took place, that uh, spiritually told us that we would connect to the Milky Way. Fuck. That new ark was corrupted to Noah's Ark. You, we got the boats, brothers and sisters. Here's the boat right here. If you went back over 4,000 years ago in the fourth dynastic period and asked Khufu about Noah, boy, what's wrong with y'all? Know nothing about those Noah. Doing the number one, number two, and everything. They just tell us any kind of story. That's why they can only give you a picture of the story. But yet this flood was supposed to have taken place because we are told that God in the Bible said that he was tired that because in Genesis chapter 1 through 6, the sons of God married the daughters of men. Is that right? This is where we were at fault in Kemet because we married foreign women on our African throne. Although we would never marry none of our own to the foreigners because they were goddesses. Here during the fifth dynasty, this African king is called Sahorah. Now, they were, here's the first time that we get a concept called Sa-Ra. Sa-Ra means the son of God. They were the sons of God and Kemet marrying the daughters of men onto the throne of Kemet. This is where you get the concept in Genesis chapter 1 where the sons of God married the daughters of men was taken from ancient Kemet. Brothers and sisters, here we have holy texts. Holy writings. We've gone into Onus' pyramid. We've gone into Teti's pyramid. Spiritual writing when the Sahuda spiritual body astral projected. This is long before biblical text was even in existence. For many years, I've taken groups back on our Kemet New Know Thyself educational tour back to the land of Kemet, now called Egypt today in the northeastern part of Africa, to see an eyewitness account where many of the Western world's Judeo Christian concepts were literally taken from the temples and tombs of Kemet. Let's go to the tomb of Teddy to see some of these first religious concepts carved in stone. Closed for years. That's what they do. They close stuff and open stuff. As we mentioned to you, this is the pyramid of Teddy. And although you see it in the uh, dilapidated state, at this particular period, at this particular period, they did not make the solid stone pyramid that you saw in the Giza Plateau at this particular time. Instead, they filled it in with the equilateral casing, but inside it was mainly rubble. But so through the dilapidation of the pyramid, you can see that the inner casing was mainly a rubble. But although it looks like this on the outside, it still is preserved on the inside, telling of the guru that I was mentioned to be truth of words, to make the uh, spiritual ascension into the spiritual realm. And this is the first spiritual, as they call today, religious text. This is the prototype of it all. That's what we're going to witness down here on the ancient... At this particular period of the 5th and 6th dynasty, these are the only pyramids that actually have writing on the walls. That's, <clears throat> that's why it's called pyramid text, okay? Because at this time it has the writing. Uh, if we were to... Uh, if we have gone into the Great Pyramid of Khufu or uh, Akat Khufu, you have no writing. When we go into Sneferu's pyramid, there is no writing. Only until we get into the 5th dynasty, 6th dynasty, like Unis and Teti, and during that period, we actually have the writing. You're coming down to see the earliest spiritual writing when people say the Bible. The point is, is that that's why it says in the King James Version, diligently compare it and revise. But how, revise to what? You have to come all the way to the text and coming forth by day and by night where these spiritual writings were written long before King James, long before the New Americanized Version, long 
Septuagint, long before the Septuagint version and all these other various versions. This is where the earliest spiritual writing is at. So we're going to go, I have to bend down a little bit, and we're going to come up in the chamber of Teddy. Just a slight bend, you'll be okay. So you are down into Teddy's pyramid of the sixth dynastic period. As I said before, the difference of the old kingdom pyramids that you saw at the Giza Plateau that you're equally going to see in Gajor is that those pyramids have no medunet or no writing. But during the fifth and the sixth dynasty, we see the writing, which is known as the pyramid text. This is where the pyramid text came from. This is the prototype of the earliest religious writing. Without this, Kemet would not have Per and Haru coming forth by day and by night. You would not have a Torah. You would not have a Bible, and you would not have a Quran. Mm -hmm. This is the origin of the earliest spiritual writing. We're talking about this pyramid is actually a book in stone. So this is a book in stone about how Teti, you see his Shinu, we know it's Teti because we see the two T's, that loaf-like figure is a T, and the I, and the royal Shinu, also called the Ren, saying that this is about Teti's spiritual ascension into the Dwat, or we know as the heavens today. Now. Class is over. I showed you these books to let you know that you need to get some of these books. I showed you two different Bibles to show you need to get several different Bibles. If you're really into researching, if you really into want to know your African spirituality and have that discipline, you need to get these things. You can get the Bible apps on your phone. They for free. So there is no excuse. But I want to say this before I get off. I had a wonderful time. But I gave you two different versions. I gave you the Christian version. How that Jesus is false. By Pastor Jesus. I agree with them to a certain point. Then I switched over the Asher Quasar. It showed you the African version and how the Bible was 
copied and they stolen from the African version of the Kemetics, which we call Egypt. Brothers and sisters, gods and goddesses, listen. Understand the concept, how words are being used. It's not that we're ignorant, it's if you don't know, it's easy to be played. See you next time. Do your research. You don't gotta leave your Christian church, but you gotta reconstruct it because the base is there already. See you next week.